Welcome to the Joy of Music. Featuring the First Lady of the Organ, Diane Bish. We invite you to meet great composers and performers. Travel to Europe's ancient monasteries and snow-covered Alps. Visit great historical cathedrals and beautiful lakes and gardens. Praise ye the Lord. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him with a psaltery and harp. Praise Him with a trumpet. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And now, Miss Diane Bish. Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today we bring you a very special program of music and the Bible, featuring bells. Bells, bells of all kinds, cathedral bells, change ringing, carillons, and handbells. Today on the program, we're going to be visiting some great cathedrals, and my special guests are the university ringers of Oklahoma Baptist University in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Today, as in the past, bells are used for numerous reasons, but mostly for use in churches, where they call people to worship, lead in praise, and even tell Bible stories. Let's begin by visiting the Freiburg Cathedral in Freiburg, Germany.
hears the pealing of great cathedral bells, it is often being done by a group of people called change ringers. We visited the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. and listened to this unique musical ensemble. peel consists of ten bells which in fact swing. Each bell revolves in a complete circle from a mouth up position around to a mouth up position and strikes once each time it revolves in either direction back and forth. A single bell can only revolve uh, once about every one and a half seconds so you can't play tunes on bells of this sort the way you can on a carillon where you have a wide variety of, of, of notes that you can play and you can play them very rapidly. Bells of this sort can only be rung very slowly. I notice that each of the ringers are watching each other diligently. Is it important to see as well as to hear? Yes, it's uh, very important to be able to uh, visualize your position because your position is always a position relative to what the other ringers are doing. And you really have to be able to watch their timing in order to gauge the stroke of your own bell. Uh, it is a team effort. Uh, it requires, of course, one person per rope, and uh, the success or failure of the group is uh, directly related to the caliber of the individual's ringing. Uh, your band is as strong as its weakest member. The order of the bells changes with every swing. That is, all ten of the bells will pull hand stroke in one order, and when they pull the back stroke, they pull in yet a different order. The objective is to keep ringing different permutations uh, until you come back to your starting point. Along with the change ringing at the National Cathedral, there is also the carillon consisting of 53 bells found in the Gloria in Excelsis Tower. Each bell is inscribed with a verse. The largest bell weighing 12 tons reads, The Lord, He is God. The smallest bell is inscribed, Amen, Amen. We have heard the cathedral tower bells, the change ringing, and the carillon. But what about the handbells? Well, in the 17th century in England, the change ringers, who spent hours in the cold towers of cathedrals, needed a warm place to practice and a place where the whole neighborhood wouldn't hear their mistakes. So the handbell was invented so they could practice inside. Today on the program, we have a most unique group to demonstrate the many uses of these bells. The University Ringers from Oklahoma Baptist University. Once again, they call us to worship in the house of God.
There's more than one way to make music on a bell. We have heard the striking of the bells and the swinging of the bells. But the innovative and amazing university ringers have also come up with some other ways to make music with bells. Before we return to the university ringers, there's one kind of bell we have forgotten to mention. It's called the Simpelstern, a German word meaning symbol star. These little stars which turn and contain tiny bells were first seen and heard on organs of Box Day in the 1700s. They always describe a mood of joy and gladness.
bells to be sounded by hand ringing were in use in Egypt as early as 200 BC. We know also that Moses, the leader of the Israelites, was informed to the wisdom and customs of the Egyptians. It is a well-known fact that the Israelites made small bells of gold directly after leaving the land of their captivity. They were, after all, accustomed to work of all kinds, not only bricks and mortar, but also metals, in order to produce not only tinkling ornaments, but at Moses' direction, the brazen serpent in the wilderness. One of the most famous pieces about bells is a composition written for organ by the French composer Louis Vierne. This piece uses the melody, which I am sure most of you have heard, the Carillon of Westminster. The melody begins in the hands with bells, then finally as the organ bells and crescendos, the feet take the melody.
Thank you for joining us today as we have brought you on the program Music and the Bible, featuring bells and organ. In Psalm 150, we read, Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Bells are the instrument of music which call all who have breath to praise the Lord and come and worship him. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music. Thank you for joining us today on The Joy of Music. Diane Bish and The Joy of Music wish to thank Lufthansa German Airlines for their support in making this program possible.